What is going on guys, Dylan here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you where I mounted my LSS2 transducer. This is the structure scan transducer for my HDS Gen 3s. And this is my Ranger Z20. And so what I did is I plumbed the wire all the way through the boat going up to the console up there, brought it through here, and I actually came out of this. So this is all the cables for my outboard. And what I did is I went ahead and ran this wire along here, which is part of the steering cables. Um, and it goes all the way through here and comes in through here and goes into the bilge area. So that's pretty straightforward. But what I ended up doing, I'm gonna get you guys a nice view here so you can see every angle. So it hooks to the steering cables, it's this cable right here. Put a nice little loop in here so it had plenty of slack so it would never be pulled tight. And then it's going down into the jack plate area. If you see, I have a little tiny zip tie right there. I'll try to zoom in on that so you guys can see. I have a little tiny zip tie right there attaching it to the jack plate. And as you can see, there are two holes that were already here. I believe these are holes if you were gonna add uh, power poles, but I just put a simple zip tie right there to hold this wire so it didn't touch anything. There's no wearing. And then what I did is I ran it inside of the jack plate. I'm gonna have to get down here so I can show you guys. And there it is. So the wire's coming down and I have a little piece of aluminum that I cut out. It's not beautiful, but uh, I cut out a piece of aluminum and I attached it to the jack plate. So this jack plate, there's about a finger's width of clearance right here between the fiberglass and the jack plate. And so what I did is I put a piece of metal behind here and drilled two holes for these bolts right here. And I put the piece of metal behind there so that when it did go through, it didn't touch the fiberglass. And then I mounted this piece with multiple settings, depending on the depth, because I didn't really know where exactly it was gonna work best, and I'm still testing this out to see what you know what's gonna uh, provide the best performance. So I put multiple settings here, and basically what I did is I just bolted the transducer plate right to that piece of metal. And so you can see it there. There's a little profile shot of the side. So it's hooked to the transducer plate. You can see the gap and it's right there. I used all stainless steel hardware and uh, I had to make sure that these bolts right here weren't long enough so that when I tightened them down, they wouldn't touch the fiberglass. I probably have a eighth of an inch clearance right here in the back. And uh, then I mounted the transducer. I put a slight bend to it so that when I was, uh, you know, actually powering the boat, the boat the nose tends to rise a little bit. So I figured that would give us the best, uh, you know, make it perfectly perpendicular to the bottom of the uh, the water. So that's the setup that I used. Very simple. Um, it did take a little bit, but I think this was a good option. The other option that I had was I was actually going to use this hole right here on the side of the jack plate. So here's my jack plate, here's my outboard, and it has a couple pre-drilled holes. I was actually going to run a large bolt through here have the bolt come out and then actually drill the mount for the transducer so the transducer would just kind of mount right here. So put the bolt here, have it stick out, have the transducer here with a, with a uh, kind of like a spacer in here um, and then tighten it down. The only reason I didn't do that was because I felt like maybe the bottom of the boat or the jack plate would maybe be in the way a little bit. And I kind of like this design a little bit better because it's more adjustable. Uh, but I have heard of experiences where people have had echoing within the uh, jack plate. And so I have yet to do a ton of testing. So after this, I'm gonna cut to a video of me actually using it on the water so that you guys can see what it looks like with this mounting configuration and what kind of results that uh, you will get. So this should work for the LSS2, LSS1, or LSS3 transducer. This is the LSS2. So I will cut to that video now so you guys can check out the performance. All right guys, so we're out here on the water. There's a nice shoreline there that uh, I am gonna be idling past. And we're gonna take a look here on the side scan to see what it looks like. And uh, don't mind all this, this is just because I was uh, sitting at a standstill when I was getting the camera ready. So, um, but we're gonna be idling past here. As you can see, there is a little bit of distortion right there in the middle. And I think that is from the jack plate. So that's something I'm gonna have to address. But overall, uh, it looks pretty damn good. As you can see, you can, this is like a, from what I know when the water level low is low, this is like a, kind of like a mud bank and these are all like pits where the water has washed it out. Looks like you got a little bit of rock and stuff. 
but uh, seems to be working really well. Um, I'm running on the 455 uh, kilohertz. When I put it on the 800, it was just washing it out. So, but uh, seems to work really good. The only disadvantage you're really gonna see is uh, this line right here. And I think, like I said, that's from the jack plate. So that's something that'll have to be addressed. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. And I hope if you have any questions, uh, please ask in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. But I know I couldn't find a ton of information when it came to mounting that transducer on a bass boat. So I hope this helps you guys out. Have a good one.